Hi, I'm Brian Van from SportBikeTrackYear.com, and today we are going to install a full Graves Link exhaust system on the 2013 STG project bike. I mean, let's be realistic. Yamaha and Graves. I mean, it's like peanut butter and jelly, baby. You're going to put an exhaust system on a Yamaha. It should be a Graves. There's no doubt, especially the R1 and the R6. They have so much racing experience and history with these bikes. It's really hard to believe somebody else is going to twist out a better exhaust system. They make exhaust for other models, same type of quality, same type of development, no doubt about it. Really recommend the product. This new can, this whole link concept is just badass. I mean, look at this canister design. It's got a different Graves badge, looks really cool. Carbon end cap, carbon canister. This can accept a you know, noise damper if you want to put it in. Obviously, on the racetrack, we're not going to do that. Strapless mount, too, which is so badass. I mean, this thing mounts up here like this. There's no canister strap. It is a really clean look. This link system is a whole new concept in exhaust. It's available in three sections, let's say. You've got your slip-on section, which works with the stock you know, mid, which has the catalyst in it, right? Fits perfect. They have hardware that fits it on there, works great. I've already had it fit up once that way. You've got the cat eliminator pipe, and then you also have, of course, right, your headers. All titanium, right? Let's take a look at these welds. If you want to get nice and close, Josh, I mean, these welds literally artwork. I mean, they look like solder. That's as good as it gets, there's no doubt. Very, very high end, all titanium. It's got the carbon heat shield on the one canister where it kind of swings out a little bit. What's really neat about this is, let's say that all you want to do is, you, know, you want to keep your stock cans, you want to keep your stock headers, all you want to do is put the, the mid on there and get rid of the catalyst. This fits with the stock components, okay? All you want to do is replace the header. You can replace just the header and leave the catalyst, so on and so forth, every piece is completely interchangeable with stock and that's what they've done different than everyone else. Let's say that you have, God forbid, another company's slip-on exhaust for this bike that was designed to work with the stock stuff. Slip-on, it has to work with the stock stuff. And let's say that company doesn't have a cat eliminator and headers, but you want that stuff. You want a full system, but you don't want to pop for the canisters. You could actually just buy the Graves cat eliminator and the headers and end up with a full system. Like I said, completely compatible with stock. Where do we go from here? The first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna finish taking off the exhaust. I've gotta get the lower fairing off. We've got a bunch of stuff to loosen up. That's the really boring part, okay? It's not that difficult. That stuff's pretty dry. It's, <laughs> it's kind of like watching paint dry on the wall. When we come back, the lower fairing's gonna be off. I'm gonna have the header off, I'm going to have that mega heavy catalyst off and we're going to be ready to install this kick-ass Graves Link Exhaust. Okay, stock system is off completely now. We're ready to put the bike back together, begin that process. We're going to begin from front to back. You know, one of the things I was really curious to do was weigh this and then weigh the Graves component. We saved six pounds just in removing this big heavy turb right here. You know, I would say that, you know, you're going to have, you're going to enjoy a little bit of a weight savings here because this is actually, a, that's a tie header. It's a pretty nice piece in itself. The canisters, huge. I mean, these, number one, they're really ugly. And number two, they're really heavy. So there's going to be a very significant weight savings. And most of it's going to be higher in the bike, which is really cool. Thus far, all I've really done is got this off, we've weighed it, I've reviewed the instructions. They have a great set of instructions here. They outline exactly what you should do from front to back. I would encourage following that. They also encourage having this installed by a qualified technician. That holds true for any big project with your bike. The reason we do these videos, just to give you an idea of how we work on our bikes. If you choose to use that as a guide to work on your own, that's fine. If you're not confident, you don't feel that you're confident, you don't have the tools, take it into a licensed mechanic and have it done right. Because remember, it's really important that that is the case. Following the instructions, 
you know, some of the things that they recommend that you're going to be, you should be prepared for is gaskets, right? They recommend for new gaskets. In my case, this bike's never really been run. I'm going to reuse the gaskets that are there and to be completely transparent, I have reused exhaust gaskets pretty much every time. I don't know that I've ever actually bought a new set of exhaust gaskets and they've always been in really good shape. I'm just trying to be honest with you. You want to make sure they stay in place. I was fortunate with this bike, they didn't all just fall out, okay? They're staying in place, everything looks good because it's important that you don't get them pinched or cockeyed between the header and the manifold. I'm sorry, in the head, you want to make sure that that lines up nicely. So, you know what, if you like to replace all your gaskets and everything, we do the job, be prepared with that. Order four new gaskets for your bike for however many cylinders you have to make sure that you're prepared in advance of attempting to install the exhaust system. What you don't want to do is get halfway into the job and be like, oh man, these gaskets, I want to replace them. And then the dealer doesn't have them because sometimes you do have to order those parts. So, nevertheless, follow the instructions, even though I'm probably not going to do that right now. It comes with two places, but you've got the Lambda sensor that the bike has installed, right? So we're gonna use this bung to mount that. It also comes with another one that'll accept another tuning sensor, okay? We're not gonna use that now, so we're gonna go ahead and plug that off. I'm going to save the plug for the Lambda sensor just because you never know what might happen in the future. I had to take this mounting bracket that holds the mid pipe in place off the stock piece, and I gotta tell you, just impressed the way they did that. No cobbling whatsoever. It fit perfect exactly like it did with the stock piece. Okay, we're going to begin building the system front to back. I'm going to start with the header for one and two on the left side of the motorcycle. The gaskets are held up there in place. I just double checked they're in there. When you're in assembling this, if you see something fall out, if you suspect it's falling out, take a minute and really look at it. You don't want to get yourself in a situation where after you have everything buttoned up that you need to go back in. If it doesn't feel right, it's probably wrong, so take a minute and double check. What I want to do now is I want to check the orientation okay, of the studs here because these springs, okay, the tolerances when you have this pipe bolted up in place, the tolerances are, are really tight for these springs okay, that hold the pipe up firmly against the head. So what I want to do is I want to put these springs in the hole that they're going to end up in now so when I get this in place and begin to put the nuts on the flange I don't have to try and you know worm those in there later. Got the one for the outboard one and we'll look at the other one the way that the studs are oriented in relation to the uh, okay and I think this will be appropriate here Odds are, if you refer to their instructions, it probably tells you exactly what hole to put it in. But like a typical dude, I'm avoiding the instructions. I'm going to go ahead and slide this into place. going to work one side at a time here. Just kind of get it fitted. Don't tighten anything now, okay? All we're looking to do is just get this up there, get the nuts started, and begin assembling the system. If you tighten down, these nuts right away, it's never going to line up. Okay, you're going to have issues. It's going to fight you the whole way. So let's just get it up there nice and finger tight. Double check with that spring. Yeah, I'd say that was a good choice there. Let's get the other one started. Repeat the same process on the adjacent cylinder, and then we'll begin on the other head pipe. Okay, I have the headers on, and then I have the collector pipe mounted as well. Remember, the collector. It had a nice stock mount, just like the, the stock header did, okay? It lined up perfectly. It's already threaded. You know, they've got a nut welded on it there at Graves. It lined up just right. I don't have any of the springs on yet, and I don't have any of the flange nuts tight here at the header. You want to make sure there's nothing binding. Everything's fitting really nicely. Okay, so I've taken a look at it while it's still loose, wiggle it around, everything's lined up just right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to begin to snug these up using just a nut driver. And what I'm looking to do here is I want to keep the distance, right, of the flange on both sides of the header pipe equal. I don't want to tighten one down more than 
the other. Okay, and that's why I'm using the nut driver. It just makes it really easy to do that. Go to the other side and repeat the process. Once I've done this, then I will go ahead and use a ratchet and an extension, and I'll get each one of these tightened up. Something that I've done for a long time that I, I like to do to just make sure that I don't lose any of the header nuts, right, that they don't come loose, is I like to use a little bit of high temp silicone. I'll dab it, once I have everything tight, right on the end of the header nut, and the stud just, you know what, just kind of ensures that it's going to stay in place. Okay, I went ahead and I snugged up all the header, header pipe flanges with the ratchet. Everything's nice and nice from side to side. Like I said, when I'm, when I'm ready to button this thing up before I put any body work on it, I'm going to use just a little bit of this high temp copper permatex, just a little dot on the end. It's just security so you don't have something happen on the track. Now we need to put the springs on. There are some really nice spring puller tools that you can buy. We have them on the website. And you think because we have them on the website, I'd probably have one in my toolbox. I don't. I'm going to use a pair of side cutters to grab onto the end of the spring. And it's like Primitive Pete using his tools in shop class. I'm going to use the wrong tool for this job and make it work. I'll repeat that process on the other side. We'll grab some more springs here and let's get the head pipes hooked to our collector. Same process. So if you're in a pinch and you're like me and you have not ordered from my very own website a spring installer tool, remember you can get by with a handy pair of side cutters. Okay. I've got the headers, we secured them all, we put the springs on. We showed you that using our, our side cutters. And now bringing it back, we've got the mount for the collector, right? It's not tight, I do have the bolt started. We're using the factory clamp and factory gasket, because remember this bike was brand new, never really run before, so I was able to reuse the gasket here. Realistically, from my mechanical experience, you can quite often reuse this stuff. Take a look at it. If you know you like to replace things like the gaskets and the exhaust, order them from the dealer before you get the system. That way you're going to be good to go. But the factory clamp, not a problem. I've got the cat eliminator pipe mounted up. But once again, this clamp is not tight yet, and this mounting bracket is not tight. We're tight up here at the headers, and that's lined up. But what I don't want to do is I don't want to tighten any of this and then create some binding as I go to mount the canisters. If they bind and you're trying to force things, you're not going to get a good fit. So remember, allow this stuff to move around a little bit. Now we're going to grab the canisters, get those mounted using the stock fasteners right here. Okay, got the right side canister. Remember, this strap was designed. I mean, you got it. This is flipping. What a gorgeous concept, right? So let's go ahead and get this slid over. That cat eliminator pipe, let's rotate it up in place. And can you see that, Josh? Mm -hmm. I mean, you can see that is how well that lined up. It doesn't get any better than that. Let's come over and see how we fare with the other side. Once again, slide this in place, make sure I've got it in there. And yeah, that right there is pretty sweet. That's about as good as it's going to get. Got a couple of additional springs that I'd like to put in place. And once I have that done, we'll go ahead and tighten up the gasket, right? That connector between the cat eliminator and the header collector. I want to tighten that clamp up first. And then when I'm done tightening that up, I'm going to tighten up my mounting brackets. Come to the other side, repeat the process here with the spring, like so. That's just right. Let's go ahead and we've got a five millimeter Allen down here. Now I'll just kind of 
wiggle things around. Snug that up. Lambda sensor is installed. It does change the position just a little bit. The stock one, right, is, is more down here. We bring it up. There's a cutout in the frame. It fits in there perfectly. And you didn't have to do anything with the wiring. So no worries there. That worked out great. Go ahead and snug up the mounting brackets here. We've got another mount on the other side for the collector pipe. It's got a 12 millimeter head on it. We've reused factory fastener there. Snug that up, come up here to the canisters. Tighten these up. You know, it might not be a bad idea to use just a little bit of Loctite here to make sure that those are not going to back out. I feel confident they're going to stay tight, so I'm going to choose not to do it, right? We, you know, we've got a large fastener hex head. It feels like it's good and tight. All right, the system is installed completely. I do need to put that rear set back on, but before I do that, what I want to do is I want to take, before I run this bike, I'm going to use some brake cleaner and a rag. And my goal here is I just want to, you know, anywhere that I've really touched the pipes, okay, before I put heat in them, I just want to wipe off any of the oily handprints off the titanium just to make sure that we don't end up with any discoloration as you start to run it. That's something that I've seen happen before, you know, if you don't take a minute and clean it. So I go ahead and just real quickly wipe it off. I mean, it's a beautiful system. I think it's like a work of art, and I'd like to kind of keep it looking that way. Especially considering this technically is not even my motorcycle. Okay, that part's done. I'm going to mount the rear setup, and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to run the bike. And what we want to do is we want to take the opportunity to check for leaks before we put all of our body work back on. Everything's mounted up, everything's tight, we are good to go. Now what we want to do is before we put the bodywork back on the motorcycle, and this especially holds true if it's stock bodywork because that is a project, we want to run the bike, double check, and make sure everything is cool. We want to check for leaks. The areas that I would focus on personally would be here. We've got a gasket there that we've reused. And of course, all along the header where it meets the cylinder head. Let's go ahead and key it up. it obviously creates some back pressure in the system. If you have a leak, specifically a gasket, an area like that, you're going to hear it start to whistle. You only need to do that for a second. I didn't hear anything. It sounds great. And realistically, checking this for leaks can be a little bit of a challenge because let's be realistic. I mean, it's, it's definitely locked. You know, with the full system on it, with the catalyst eliminated, and without having any of the noise reducers in the canisters, which I'm not going to use on this, you know, it's loud, so it makes it more of a challenge to find the leaks. Plugging that up real quick like that, you don't hear a whistle, you're good to go. Okay, all in all, to recap, what do I think of this exhaust system? I mean, this thing is amazing. The Graves quality, I mean, you look at these welds, they look like solder, for God's sake. The new can design is epic. I mean, what else can you say about it? Love the shape of that, that carbon tip. I believe they're using this canister design now, too, I think, on their, their current AMA race bikes, the R6 and the R1, and the stuff just looks amazing. I can't wait to get this motorcycle down to Barber and ride it. I'm Brian Van, sportbiketrackgear.com. This is our Graves Link Exhaust install video. 
on our 2013 STG project bike.